The Riley and Kimmy Show in Artist Alley. As a matter of fact, at one of my favorite artists of all times, Booth. He has been on this show before. I'm I'm actually pleased he's on it again. Billy Tushy, right with the Riley and Kimmy Show. Hello, Florida. <laughs> nah, hey, buddy, how are you? Hey, Pete. Sorry. Uh, he's saying hi to people already. Yeah, is that from? Is that Pete from Heroes Haven? That's Pete from Heroes Haven. Yeah, there's my, Pete. My Goomba from yep. Long Island, boy. Uh, uh, he, like me. He's going to come in here. He's going to read the interview. There we go. It's Pete, the owner of Heroes Haven. Hey, Pete. We've talked before on the phone. How's it going? It's going well. How's MegaCon treating you? Very good. I'm liking it this year. It's uh, it's nice. It's big. It's the aisles are. You could walk. I'm I'm thinking it's going to be a good show. Now, does Heroes Haven have a booth here? No, we don't. We just uh, walk it around, getting six. I came to visit Billy. Okay. So but, no, no, you buy key books. You get big books. You know, the big uh, we, collection. Have you get, gotten any here yet? We get everything. We try to get uh, a big selection. We get key books. We get uh, new books, old books. I uh, haven't bought anything yet, so going to start looking around a little bit, though. Sketch covers, a lot of uh, original art. Yep, a lot of uh, sketch oh, yeah. covers. Um, we just picked up some. You got those sketch covers? Yeah. Got from Frank Miller's. Mike Perkins, Inc. Oh, my gosh. Sketch. Yep, yep. Yeah, those were beautiful. Those came out great. Actually, I got. Um, this is show and tell at Billy Tushy's booth. Check this out, Billy. Yeah. Two Frank Miller sketches. So. Frank Miller. There we go. Here's a here's a Wolverine. You can Check grab that. Frank Miller. Is Klaus Jansen here? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then here's a uh, Daredevil. Yeah. Frank Ink these Frank Ink these too. Wow. And Whoa. Frank, Check so it out. Those cool. those Look are, at that. Are those are not getting touched. Those are good to go. Whoa. Going right to CGC with those. So. Oh boy! Yeah, yeah. We touched them before CGC did. Think about that. Well, we touched the books. We yeah, yeah, the bag. <laughs> we, yeah. Just the bag. We touched the bag, not the books. <laughs> wow! This, this is a great show and tell here at Billy Tushy's. You never know who's going to show up at the Billy Tushy booth. Back to Billy though, and uh, I'm going to get back to it. And right. thank you very much, Pete, guys. Thank you. I'll see you later. I'll see you, brother. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, okay, we'll do that after. Right. Come by before the show. I will. That's uh, Heroes Haven in Tampa, yeah. the comic book store to check out. Yeah. Now we're going back to Billy Tushy here, real quick. Billy obviously has his art work yeah. here. Well, we're all family here, which is great. You know, that is that's what's so great about this industry is that at, um, the cool thing is is that uh, you got some sort of fame. I mean, you do make a great living and you do have some sort of uh, and do have an aspect of fame. It's not like you're a film star or a television actor or something like that because you can go anywhere you want and no mm. one sees you. And the only times that someone would recognize you, it's really cool. It's like, oh yeah, why well, yes I am <laughs> Billy Tucci. So, that's it. Well, Billy, here for four days, MegaCon four days, you have two books here, correct? Yeah, of yours? Yeah, yeah, I was only, I, was, I brought a lot of prints, I brought original art, and I only brought two books. Uh, my Sergeant Rock, The Lost Battalion, collected edition, the hardcover, which is sold out, obviously, but I bought the last of the stock from Diamond. Whoa. So um, I bought the last 180 copies of it. So uh, I do a little sketch in it, and I sell them as artist editions, with each one comes with its own sketch, and I sell them for, I think it's a $25 book, I sell them for 40 bucks with the sketch. Nice. And uh, and then my child is born, Christmas book, I, I, I bring, because I always bring that with me. And um, it's just that I couldn't ship stuff here uh, just because of my scheduling, drawing Harley Quinn. And uh, we're off to Phoenix Comic Con on Thursday, I think, and it wouldn't be time to ship it back. So I just wanted to travel real light. Now, are you working on Harley here at MegaCon? Yeah, at all? yeah, I got my yeah, I got the art here, and I got but my script here from Jimmy, and that's what I'll be doing tonight. Oh. I'll be uh, in the room working on it, and tomorrow night, and then Saturday night we have birthday dinner, so that'll be nice. What, but, he's drawing yeah, a comic nice. book at MegaCon. Well, yeah, yeah, dude, lots of people are. Yeah, but that's when so they cool. get out there working, because you got to work. Now, two more questions. Uh, I'll get you to your fans here. Is Captain America, Hail Hydra. What's oh. what's the story, dude? Yeah, well, like I said, I th so I had posted on Facebook um, through Twitter, and it said, uh, yeah, I guess uh, I guess Captain America never was great. Mm. And um, I posted that someone had made a really great tweet and said, how bad are you at your job when you take a character created by two Jewish guys to come to, to fight Nazis and turn him into a Nazi? I mean, how bad is that? And uh, my whole point is that he's been a sleeper spy or, or whatever for the past 75 years. And I guess he's just waiting for the right time to strike after 75 years. So apparently this is the right time. Just ridiculous. I, it's, I think it's a gimmick. Um, and I love Captain America. Same here. I, I, I truly do. I just think that... It seems that there's some political overtones going in with it, um, personal political overtones, which I don't really care for. Um, I don't think there's no place in comics for that. And I think for the past 15 years or so, they've, the House of Ideas has really turned into the House of Gimmicks. 
and I think this is a gimmick. And even if the ends justify the means, and there is some brilliant ending, and oh my God, he fooled us all. I think the the damage is irreparable. I think that it smells of a gimmick. It looks like a gimmick, and I think it's something that that is really going to hurt them. I would not want to be a Marvel executive today. Do you think? DC now has an advantage with the well, re I've with a rebirth. I've, I've heard great things about rebirth. Um, I've been locked away in my studio until this morning when I got up at four to get on a plane to fly here. So I haven't picked up rebirth. I'm looking forward to picking up a copy here. But I've been hearing tremendous things, and um, it just seems, you know, I'm I'm an independent guy, and I'm a fan though too. But it just seems like uh, this week it's a big win for DC this week and a huge, uh, catastrophic disaster for Marvel, it seems, just from the way everyone's talking. I mean, the poor guy is getting death threats who wrote it, which is mm. insane. But um, again, it's just it seems silly and it seems very transparent. And uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem like a good idea to me. One last question. Conventions have had to change over the last 10 years, maybe and definitely 20 years that you've went to. Mm. Do you think... They've they're steering away from the actual creators in the artist alley area. I mean the true well, this guys. Well, alley's pretty terrific. Uh, I got to be honest with you. You've been seeing a lot of that with with the wizard conventions, um, which many of us don't even do anymore. You know, uh, we just you know no thank you because they are they do seem more focused on some craft art is it, or craft art, don't yeah. you? Think? Oh yeah, yeah, or some. Someone who was in a television series uh, in 1978, you know, and and uh, they're pushing them up and pushing us back, and they still call it a comic con, which I, I think is pretty uh, pretty uh, ironic to begin with mm -hmm. when they push the artists and the cartoonists and the ones that actually make the comics, you know, out to the to the farther edges to the outer skirts. So. Do you think that's the future for some of these big cons? They um, will be pop culture cons. I don't know. It seems you know a few years ago, but the comic books and have really been making a big comeback. And, and it's kind of cool because of the movies and the great TV shows and things like that, that it has been bringing people to buying the books, which is uh, pretty fantastic, which is giving us now, uh, um, you know, like it was 10 years ago or cool. so. Yeah. Cool. Well, Billy, I'm going to let you get back to the people here, and you're here through Sunday yep. at MegaCon. That's at the Orange County Convention Center. Stop by Billy Tushy's booth. We are in aisle oh, and one. Please, oh, if anyone's oh. here, I am, it's Memorial Day, and uh, we are raising money for the veterans, for the American Legion. I don't sign for, aut I don't charge for autographs, but if anyone can come by, we got poppies to give away, um, and if they can make a small donation, no donation is too small, and... 100% oh, of it goes to veterans, and it goes to my personal American Legion Hall, and they have a lot of programs. They help a lot of veterans suffering from, well, not only phys just physical ailments, uh, but but uh, emotional ones. It's a lot of things with, with uh, PSTD, um, and... Um, and just a lot of them too are very, very, things are very rough for them financially. You know, um, this economy, you know, they say that we're out of a recession, but a lot of veterans are hurting, record numbers of them are. And uh, anyone can just come by, get a poppy, throw a little bit in, you know, in the bucket. That would be just great. All right, and that is aisle 100, Billy Tushy. Come by, see him at MegaCon till Sunday. He'll be here all through the whole thing. So we'd love to see you at MegaCon. Yep, and I think we're P1 in aisle 100. But I think it starts with the letters here, so I'm P is in Paul 1.